are you saying that the Microsoft MFA with with uh, Active Directory with Azure AD and the, no matter what you choose as a third party above that level, you have to get Microsoft correct because we see some. Do you see some people just subverting Microsoft and saying, no, we're going to let Okta or Duo or RSA handle the authentication? And where do you see that being problematic? We see a big mix of that. So, for example, we're in one environment where they've used Salesforce for a while. They have Azure AD. They have, you know, 365. They have this whole MFA stack. But uh, their uh, Salesforce or, or ADP is still using an old LDAP federation that's going, you know, just straight into their, their domain controller. Uh, because back when they set it up, that was really the only way you could do it. You know, SAML 3, what have you, you know, old fashioned. Um, but what that also means is a lot of the systems that are using AI to come up with what is Bill's usage pattern on the cloud, well, that, that's going to bypass it, right? Because it, sure. it, it's kind of an out of band authentication. Uh, and so we do see where people have, uh, it kind of, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, but people just forgot about it. Like, why would you go look at how your Salesforce is, is working? Because it's working, right? There's, there's nothing wrong with it. But in today's world, you have to look at it because with everyone leaving the building and with more and more cloud being uh, implemented, and there's always some difficulties with uh, cloud logs hitting your seam the same way on-prem logs used to hit your seam, uh, that you really have to look at that to make sure you have the right data set. Because the more... Um, combined that data set is, the better. So for example, I could have cloud app security go through uh, and do a bunch of third parties and Microsoft and then combine them together, or I can make sure everybody is doing proper SSO with Azure AD and all of that data is already 90% right there. And I just have to get some extra context from those third party vendors. Uh, one equals a lot better security than the other. And it's also a lot simpler. You know, we used to always uh, fight about uh, provisioning, deprovisioning, who's got a deprovisioning system. And nowadays, it, it seems like the more people have truly embraced, uh, uh, I'll just pick on Microsoft, uh, Azure AD and the abilities that it has, whether you use it with Okta or not, doesn't matter. You know, these things all play together. Sure. Um, you know, it really did away with a lot of those concerns about provisioning, deprovisioning, because half that stuff is, is automatic. Um, and everybody's supporting it now because users are at home, mm -hmm. they know they can't rely on old systems like Improvata that we sold back yeah. in the day or screen scrape SSO or RSSO systems. They actually have to be SSO. Um, and a lot of that works really, really well. So uh, almost redeploying the old SaaS apps as cloud apps is a good way to um, you so, know, kind of get everything pulled together. Do you think together. people tried to rig uh, some of the, these SaaS providers into their on-prem world using sort of mm -hmm. old strategies, but now they need to really look at an API-based integration with their, mm -hmm. with their, uh, with their cloud broker, whether that be Microsoft's uh, MFA conditional access solution or, or some other third party. But, yep. but ultimately, the more you get Microsoft correct from a core fundamentals, will mm -hmm. we'll assist in the provisioning, deprovisioning, and uh, process. Are, are it also you helps with the integration too. So as a good example, um, we're, we're playing with a finance system and that finance system can use Okta. And so it's great. Okay, I've got Okta. But if I do it the Microsoft way, it'll also integrate how some of the invoicing comes out of the system, how some of the file sharing comes out of the system. If I do it the Okta way, it does not. If I do it the Microsoft way, it does. And, and so on one hand, uh, you know, one's a third party and, and it's a little bit more convenient for some IT reasons. But on the other hand, one's a lot more convenient to the finance group <laughs> because sure. everything's in, uh, integrated. It works basically flawlessly automatically. Um, and, and I think that's something that people are going to have to embrace because Windows 10 is really built from a, almost a 365 manner versus yeah. a operating system manner. And then, of course, you know, it's hard to find a business today that doesn't use Office 365 and uh, Microsoft for, for email, uh, at least in our B2B space. Uh, and so that kind of integration is uh, really useful. It's really uh, more important now that everyone's working from home because that integration means it's going from system to system and not system to PC at someone's house to system, right?